No dogs in sight. Okay then, back to work. Welcome to Vaha- Oh, hey there, Alma. Um... <sighs> she seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer her up? Let's try to cheer Alma up. She might like classy drinks, but what she really likes... Hey! Hmm? And this? It's on me. Drink, so you at least change your expression. Why not just say you're worried about me? You got the message anyway, didn't you? Huh. So, how is it? A brandini! So you do pay attention to what I ask for. You have quite the fixation with brandinis. To be honest, they suit you. Hey, wanna hear a silly story? Always. When I turned 21, my dad and I went to a bar to celebrate. Just him and I. He told me to dress well enough that he looked like my sugar daddy. It was a fun night. We pretended at times we were dating, I managed to blow off some steam about my mom, but the highlight was him ordering a brandini for me. I've had plenty of drinks and gotten wasted many times since I was 15, but that drink was different. It wasn't about getting drunk. The drink itself was the pleasure. He too said they suited me somehow. Oh? Ever since that day, he's called me Brantini Girl from time to time. <laughs> Your dad sounds like a cool guy. You should meet him sometime. So? Why are you deflating? Deflating? When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly, my grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. <laughs> so, what is it? Was it the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, that is old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Say, Jill, how's your mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. Silly Alma, I've been feeling like utter shit the last couple of days. You can't make me feel worse. So, go ahead, unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so, remember my sister Diana? The one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? Perfect summary. I'll use it next time. I didn't tell you the whole story then. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that. She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. So, what does this fully capable woman do a couple of weeks later? Why, bring her abusive husband back, of course. What? Yeah, and the guy spent a couple of days with her before leaving again. He had a nice couple of hot, steamy nights and then left. I-, I well... Huh. You reacted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But the story doesn't end there. Oh no. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get money. And it was up to me to pick her up. For the last couple of days, she left her kids with my parents. And being such sweet angels, they've made a mess out of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give them some peace. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So we're in the car and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all the built-up tension, I just exploded. First, I started ranting about how her kids are growing up, seeing some messed up stuff. I start scolding her about not taking responsibility, about not taking proper care of her children. I tell her that she's in no place to have all those escapades. And after all that, she just says, What the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. <sighs> yeah, 
you slutty skank. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not leaving them in the first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting the guy that hit me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Eva and Bernardo, and they've turned out pretty damn well. I don't have any kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! Ah! Damn. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. I love my family, and I put them above all else. But Diana is seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. Any way I could help? You just did. Huh? I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not one to let stuff like that get to me. I'm still angry as hell, though, and I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom your daughter is a slut. I just needed to get all this off my chest, you know? Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. Nah, all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? The worst offender is my dad, actually. Kidding, kidding. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Eva. She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. These can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. And poor Bernardo. His breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much from my mother's side of the family. My father's sisters still look quite young, but when menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Good enough skin and hair, I guess. There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far I haven't had problems with that. Oh, I see. Hey, do you know what worries me the most about the whole Diana situation? How your nephews are turning out? If she leaves them with my mom, they'll turn out better than her. Somehow. Actually, what worries me is... What if I end up like that, too? How so? If I find a good man and I settle down, what if he turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst where I want to live my life and end up like that? What if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that he'll be fine. You think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey! Am I lying? No. But there are things best kept as unspoken truths. <sighs> I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. For now, the time has come to get another drink. What can I get you? Hmm. Get me something with ice, but alcoholic, please. Alright. Alma asked for something cold and with alcohol. Here you go. Thanks. I needed to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. So, you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? I don't think too much about it. Oh, come on. You heard my problems. I want to help you, too. Don't worry too much. Right, I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You want to come? Sure. Something tells me this mega Christmas is going to be a mess at my parents' home, so I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. Mm, to be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. It won't go to waste. Gotcha. Hmm. Say, Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? Well, I guess I like legs the most. Really? I like breast better. Breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have a better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs. And a lot less messy. <laughs> you silly girls. Boss? 
You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best parts are the wings! Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Where did you get spicy chicken wings? From a spicy chicken. You know, spicy chicken. The shop two blocks from here. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because... Huh? Thought as much. Yo, Armitage! Alma. I know what I said. Will the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? You might need to heat it up. But it'd be cooked otherwise. Great! I expect you here Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back to my office. Uh... She left the bucket. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Oh, mild spice. Nice. Weird. Maybe she got a mixed up order and that's why she left him here. She usually orders stronger stuff? I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Hmm. Say, Jill, what kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I want them to be decent enough. Not jealous, not aggressive, responsible enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Hmm. No tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. What about you? I like them well-dressed. If they go out in iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes, they're sure to catch my eye. Some muscle is always fine, too. But sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my men. My potential husband, on the other hand, is another matter completely. I see. So, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turned out to be spicy. What do I get you? Anything, as long as it helps me with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay. Let's give her something to help her get over the spiciness of the wings. Here. Whew. It helped. Thanks. Alright, so next question. What kind of girl do you like? Uh. Hmm? Y you first. Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but nope. I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Shit, just calm down. I guess I like girls with light-colored hair. Light-colored hair? Yeah, you know, like redheads and such. What about white? Like your boss? You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry, it's just that when she got here with the bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. Hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. I just felt like teasing you. Ah. <sighs> so, light-colored hair. What about blondes? Do you like me? Yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls, too, and I start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? Nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment. I would never let you go. <laughs> okay, then. Enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you were feeling shitty these last days? What? Oh... That. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. Come on, Jill. You've heard my problems so many times. Now I want to help you. Uh... Come on, come here. Huh? I told you to sit here. Come on. Huh? What? What are you... Alright then. Now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly. The bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay, then I move this here, click here, and now it works for you, for me, and that dog in a Hawaiian shirt. Why with him, too? He's a dog in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Right, and how did you even manage to- Oh uh, yeah, hacker, right. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty, 
Mind telling me why? It's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. Uh, okay then. It's something that goes back to my college years. Whoa, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave more credits. I really liked her, and after some time, I found out she liked me too. <laughs> we started going out. I met all of her family, even, and... You want a drink? What? A drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please! I want to test this whole bartending interface. Ugh, a sugar rush then. You can't mess that up. Right. Jill asked for a sugar rush. Now, how did this thing work again? Here! Thanks. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Hmm. I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know. People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. So, keep telling the story. Ugh. Well, as the career went on and on, it got harder and harder. The last year and a half of it became nothing but study session after study session, investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech, and suddenly, while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that. So, I was just standing there and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I had only gone through the motions, day after day, from high school to graduating. I felt like whole years of my life had slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. But at that point, I stopped and realized I needed a breather or something. Did I even like that career? It was all terrifying as hell. I needed all of my strength to not start running like a panicked mess. Hmm. <sighs> so, a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenore was ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had at graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told Lenore and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. Things devolved pretty quickly. She said one too many things, I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house and I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Huh? The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came to this bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently, she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it, wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true she had that for a long time, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? 
I don't know, I just feel like all kinds of failure. Jill. And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yes, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but she's just a kid for fuck's sake. She lost the sister or pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. Pride? Fear? A stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as a thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly forever. I'm such a piece of shit. A selfish piece of shit. I honestly don't know what to say. I didn't expect the story to be this. I... Yo, boob tender. Y yes Can you get me a big beer here? Coming right up. A big beer. Big beer. Big beer. What makes a beer big in this thing? Big beer for Jill. Thanks. I need to remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Do you drink lots of beer? One of the perks of the BTC-issued liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Ooh. Hey, Jill. What kind of girl was Lenore? Hmm? Well, she was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed and got riled up easily. Stressed was my default state. So, just like you're behaving right now. Shut up. I was worse. Can't picture that. Don't. It's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time, I saw her go from talking about video games to talking about sports. All of that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Lenora would always present me to her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. Ah, <sighs> man, I'm gonna miss her. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but... She was such an awesome person, I just wanted to apologize. And now... Uh, you know, in a cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking what the hell to do with my life, I remembered a night we spent in a club. She started talking about how the drinks were synthesized, the chemistry involved, the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. I remember saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said, if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh. Interesting. Mm. Are you okay? For some value of okay, yeah. It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. To thank me? I guess I just needed someone to tell all of this to. And you were the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there, listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person, that I'm not one to spout love and fluffiness, but I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client. But I really appreciate your friendship, or at the very least your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. Jill, are you dying? Shut up! I'm trying to have a heart-to-heart -heart here. Sorry, sorry, it's just, it's weird for you to get so sappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know? I never, and I mean never, want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. I want to avoid that at any cost. And if it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. 
And if I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride and muster all the courage I can and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. Hate it. Hate it. <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. All right, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know? Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I mean it, you know? Thanks for everything today. Silly Jill. You listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Did you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. That Alma girl sure is nice. Ah, boss, uh, did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did? You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, boss, about those chicken wings? Fucking idiots with the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana, we won't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat their regulars? I'm gonna call the manager. Boss? 